Hi, I'm Paul Bade, and I am here today to talk to you about repairing grant issues that have been discovered with respect to the development of Ocean City Homes in the southern end of Ocean City. This is the agenda for today. I'm going to discuss why we are here, give you some background and his history of Ocean City Homes development. I'll explain to you the repairing grant that was signed in 1978 between Ocean City Homes Incorporated and the state of New Jersey. I'll explain the subsequent actions and errors made by the state of New Jersey. And then I'll describe what the state should do to remedy the situation. So why are we here? Again, significant oversights, errors, and irregularities have been observed in the handling of repairing grants for the Ocean City Homes development. As a result, many property owners have purchased repairing grants that were unnecessary since they were covered by the 1978 grant. These property owners have paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to the state of New Jersey that was unnecessary. The purpose of this brief is to discuss what the state should do to remedy the situation. So now for a little history and background on Ocean City Homes. Shown here is an 1886 survey map obtained from the New Jersey Department of Environmental Protection, or NJDEP. Highlighted in the red box is the area where Ocean City Homes development now resides. The state's 1886 survey maps are used as a basis of claims when tidal flows are no longer active in the 1940 aerial photographs that the state uses. New Jersey state repairing claims can change due to natural changes in flows. However, when man-made tinkering occurs, such as a blocking of a stream by a railroad or mosquito ditching, the state's claims do not change. Here's a 1920 aerial photograph. What's important to note here is that the railroad extension from Petersburg to Ocean City was completed in 1897 by the Ocean City Railroad Company. A primary feed shown here is in, with the number one that would provide a feed into this tidal flow had been blocked by the railroad in 1897. In the 1920s, they had the great fleet storm of 1920, which breached the railroad at that point but it was repaired within a year or so. Here's a 1940 aerial photograph obtained from NJDEP. It's important to take note of man's impact in this photo. In addition to the blockage of this creek up here by the railroad, Significant changes to the tidal flow were introduced by mosquito ditching, these long lines that are shown in the photo. There may have been some other activities because the land over in here looks somewhat drained. Recall that the state's claims do not change due to man-made tinkering such as blocking a stream by a railroad or mosquito ditching. Here's a 1941 aerial photograph, courtesy of Cape May County, of the same area. This more clearly shows the changes due to humanity, just because it's a little lighter in color and easier to see. I'm now going to discuss the repairing grant that was issued to Ocean City Homes in 1978. First, I'd like to give you some background on the situation at that time. Ocean City Homes Development Phase 1 was completed in the mid-1970s, but lacked a repairing grant from the state. Ocean City Homes would not be allowed to build Phase 2 because of new environmental regulations. So the solution which was adopted was for the state of New Jersey to provide a repairing grant to Ocean City Homes for its existing development and for Ocean City Homes to deed the undeveloped parcel to the state of New Jersey. This is an excerpt of a map 
from the riparian grant issued to Ocean City Homes. Shown on the left with the shaded creeks is a parcel outlined here that is being deeded to the state of New Jersey. On the right is the Ocean City Homes development. It's important to note that the title flows shown on this map appear somewhat different than in the 1868 map. However, the title flows in this area were identified by the state of New Jersey for the grant. I'm now gonna talk a little bit about this area right here. This is the 1920 aerial photograph. So here's that area shown, blown up, and here's the equivalent area on the 1886 survey map. And what I'd like you to see is that what the state thought was or may, may have considered to be two streams in 1920 was actually one stream in 1886. You can tell that just by looking at the lines here. You could also see that even in 1920, if you actually look real closely, it appears like they're slightly connected. You can see this other spur coming down here. You can see this little tail down here. So what appears as two streams in the later maps was one stream in 1886. Let's now explore just how inaccurate the state's depiction of streams was in the 1978 grant to Ocean City Homes. Shown outlined in red are the streams as depicted in the 1978 grant. Highlighted in blue are the streams as the state now depicts them on their claims maps. As you can see, there really are significant differences. I would like you to also take note of the stream segment, which became non-tidal due to man-made changes, such as mosquito ditching and the 1897 railroad. And I have arrows down here which show segments of the stream that actually were a single stream in the 1868 survey map, as we discussed in the prior slide. These inaccurate renderings of the streams by the state of New Jersey in the 1978 grant do not invalidate the state's obligations given the intent and the language that I will show you in the Ocean City Homes grant. Let's talk acreage. This photo is a little different than the previous one in that I now have three colors. Red reflects the depiction of the tidal flows in the 1978 grant. Blue depicts New Jersey's revised claims and green represents the overlap between the two. The 1978 repairing grant was for 1.14 acres of tideland. But that's not really what's important. The question in my mind is whether the revised claims by the state of New Jersey are more or less acreage than they sold to Ocean City Homes Incorporated in the 1978 grant. Using a photo editor and counting pixels by color, it turns out that the 1978 grant was for more acreage than the state's current claims. They overpaid. So let's get back to the grant. We've already seen this. The state's gonna provide a repairing grant to Ocean City Homes for its existing development. And Ocean City Homes is going to deed the undeveloped parcel back to the, well, to the state of New Jersey. So here's some language in that repairing grant. What's important to note is that Ocean City Homes is asking for the a repairing grant in which the state is the one responsible for fixing the boundaries for the formerly flowed streams, as well as fixing the price. Here's some more language from that same repairing grant. Note that the state is conveying all formerly flowed land within the Ocean City Homes development. This shows the intent. 
So now let's summarize what we've learned with respect to the repairing grant issue. The intent and language in the 1978 grant conveys all formerly flowed lands within the parcel of Ocean City Homes. Furthermore, the 1978 grant was for more acreage than the state's current claims. Clearly, the 1978 grant should satisfy the state's claims for the entire parcel of Ocean City Homes. That document was signed by the governor of New Jersey in 1978. This map is from the state of New Jersey's database of grants. The region to the left of the red line is Ocean City Homes. I am now going to talk about a number of individual grants sold to people that I believe were unnecessary. This is one of the major areas in dispute. As shown here, there appears to be 24 homes affected and 13 unnecessary grants. Adding up the cost, there are over a half a million dollars in unnecessary grants sold by the state. Here's another region. Looking at this region, you can see the state of New Jersey has again sold people grants, which should have been covered by the grant to Ocean City Homes. Here are two final regions. While I don't have the details of grant number 28, I suspect this is another unnecessary grant. So what should the state do to remedy the problem? Well, the state should honor the commitment made by the governor in the grant to Ocean City Homes, both in intent and in language. The inaccurate depiction of creeks in the grant does not release the state from its obligations. Given the unnecessary expenses inflicted upon property owners covered by the Ocean City Grant, the state of New Jersey should immediately issue no interest grants at no cost. The state of New Jersey should also refund all the unnecessary grants. Thank you for listening to this presentation. I hope you have a good day.